Hi everyone. As a part of this 3D product development class, you will learn shape, silhouette, style for the design development in Chapter 5. So the objectives of this chapter learning, first, to examine how design features affect the performance and cost of the garment that you will design, and you will understand the method that can use to shape garment to the human body because you're gonna design the garment on the 2D fabric and then make it to be the 3D dimensional. So you're gonna learn about the method to shape this garment, including the impact of fabric grain and the role of underlying fabric and supporting devices in garment. And for this chapter, you're going to learn professional like terms related to the silhouette and style options and design features. First, let's talk about shape. The garment shape is really an important component of design because you can enables the fit of the garment based on this shape and also designer can achieve the certain desired silhouette and style or the look of the wearer based on this garment shape so for example let's say you want to have a romantic look of the style then you want to have more of like flowy pattern and the shape of the garment as you can see in the first this picture and the last picture here then you need to have the shape that can have this flare or flowy look. And also, if you wanna have more of the classic look, you wanna have more like a tailored shape, then you need to have more of the fitted shape of the garment to make that look. And especially for the tailored garment, you're gonna need to have a clear garment shape to determine that the tailored garment. To learn more about the garment shape, you need to understand the fabric grain and the role of this fabric grain first. So the grain of fabric is defined as the orientation of the yarns that make up the fabric. So especially for the woven fabric, there are two sets of yarns interlaced at right angles to one another that make up the quality woven fabric. On the other hand, when you think about the knit fabric, more like stretch you know fabric knit fabric has one continuous yarn instead of the two sets of yarn so for this reason knit fabric they don't technically have a grain but most of the directional rules still apply for the knit fabric as well so you can understand but then from this slide you can think more based on the woven fabric first about the length wide grain if you see the picture on the right here, so based on the cut line, more of the vertical vertical line is called as a lengthwise grain, also called as warp. So this lengthwise grain runs parallel to the salvages, it's the wooden edges of the fabric. So these lengthwise yarns tend to be more stable, less up to stretch or shrink, and more up to hang straight than crosswise yarns. On the other hand, the horizontal line based on the cut end that's called as crosswise grain, or the called as weft, fill, or filling. So this crosswise grain consists of the yarns woven over and under the lengthwise yarns. So this crosswise yarns in grain is less stronger than the lengthwise grain and has a slight stretch. So if you see this picture here, so this is for the woven fabric, you can see the lengthwise grain and the crosswise grain. And I'll talk about the bias on the next slide. Next, let's talk about straight of grain. Both the lengthwise and crosswise grains are called as straight of grain because they follow the straight yarns of the fabric. So most of the fashion designer, marker makers place pattern pieces in the lengthwise or straight 
of grain, which is the direction of the fabric, unless there are any other instructions about the design. And then about the bias and the true bias, so any types of other directions of the fabric that is not the lengthwise grain or crosswise grain is called as bias. So for the true bias, that's the 45 degree angle to the lengthwise and the crosswise grains of woven fabric is called as a true bias. But then the degree can be 10 or 30 or like you know 60 and so on so still all these different angles then the pattern piece is proven that the fabric that way is called as a bias so this figure is showing you how you can have a different drafts of the skirt based on the cut on various grains the first one is cut lengthwise grain at center front. So you can see more of that um, the draft goes on the side because your the bias area is on the side. And for B, you will see the lengthwise grain in center of each core. So you can see the even types of the um, drapes around the skirt. And the third one, the C, is the lengthwise grain at side seams so you can see more of the drapes in the middle of the skirt so depending on where you cut on the fabric on the various screen you're gonna get the different garment shape and this example figure also show you that you can have more of the fabric efficient garment cut on the fabric when you put it on the straight up grain layout compared to put the pattern on the bias side of the layout. So this is something that you can consider as well when you design for make the garment to be more fabric efficient. So you learn how the garment shape will be changed different based on the fabric grain. And now I'll talk a little more about shaping method, how you can get more of the detailed shape. So making the 2D pattern to be more 3D look, you know, based on the dart and dart equivalent. So before we talk about darts and darts equivalent, I want to explain about the sloper. So the basic fitted garment that drive, I mean, usually just drive from the basic block or sloper pattern. So when you think about the manufacturers, they have this basic block for each classification of the operator that they produce. And then they're going to modify this basic sloper to the different design by adding the you know, darts and different shape in it. So the designers also use these shaping methods like darts or darts equivalent to make changes in the basic block, which is the code as sloper, to produce more style variation. So if you see this figure, you can see the basic block for woman dress and the man's suit. So for woman's dress, you're gonna see that the basic blocks of the skirts, front and the back, bodies front and the back, sleeve is gonna be one sleeve will be for both sides. And for the men's suit, you see the pants back and front the pattern, and the jacket back and front the pattern, and the sleeve pattern. The dart is the key shaping method of garment design and that is a triangular for the stitch to shape the flat fabric to specific curves of the body. So if you see this picture here, the pattern, this purple pattern, this is the 2D pattern, it's flat fabric and you see this dart point, dart legs and the fold, so that is the triangular fold here so once you fold 
based on the line there and once you stitch that the dark legs together underneath then you're gonna get the um, curves of the body shape and that's gonna be the dimensional shape so if you see these figure 5-6a that's that one of the example of the single pointed dart so that's how they stitch together so let's talk about the single pointed dart a little more so designer can use this single pointed dart like one in the figure 5.6a and they can use this vertically or horizontally so designers often use this single pointed dart vertically at the back neck or back shoulders of the jacket at the waistline of the bodies skirts pants and dresses also this single pointed dart can be used horizontally at elbows and at the bust line of the woman's clothing and when you have this single pointed dart diagonal way the bust dart that's called as a french dart you can find that example look on figure 5.6c and next one is the double pointed dart so that the two single pointed darts join at the right end to form one continuous dart is called as a double pointed dart also as a control dart so that's in figure 5.6c and 6d actually right and this all the lines that dart how they make the shape and this curve will be different based on the size of dart so when you have more of the narrow dart that is gonna fit for more small body curves and when you have a bigger dart wider dart that's gonna fit for more larger body curves another way to make the shape of the garment and make the curve of the garment is dart equivalent. Dart equivalent are also called as dart substitutes and these include two different types and first is shaped seams, second tile phonies. So first about shaped seams, not all seams are dart substitutes but these shaped seams that the edge of that um, patterns these are the common dart equivalents, especially in close fitting garments. The examples of these shaped seams include the princess seams, yucks, and gores. And about the style fullness. So fullness may be the result of releasing the dart or of adding extra fullness. So that can be done. This fullness can be added by using the release dart added phonies, ease, gather, sharing, smoking, elastic, and drawstrings. So instead of adding the dart by folding the fabric or by adding the elastic to it, you can create the phonies of the style. So going back to the shaped seams, let's talk about different types of these shaped seams. First about the princess seams. So this incorporate the bust and waist dart in fitted woman's wear. So if you see figure 5.7 and F, you see the princess seam how they look. So you will see this like dress center front and the side front and then you can see the gray area of the seams there to add the um, shape of the garment. And the yokes is gonna be the horizontal divisions within the garment. And I'll show the example on the following slide. And gores is going to be the vertical divisions within the garment. So here are the examples of the yokes and gores, which is the examples of the shaped seams. And the gathers is for the style fullness. It's not the shaped seams, but then adding and folding the fabric to add the style fullness. So about the yokes. So as mentioned, there is the horizontal divisions within the garment and they are usually small flat panels of the fabric at the shoulders, waist, or midleaf. If you see this example here, 5.8a, 
So it's on the pants. You can see the split yoke riser in pants. And for the 5.88B, you see the midrib yokes on the dress. And for 5.8C, you see the back shoulder yoke in the shirt. So you see the vertical broken division line to make the shape for the garment. And for the gore, so these are the vertical divisions within the garment. Usually tapered panel seamed together to add the shape to the garment. So if you see the examples on figure 5.9, you see the A, you see four gore skirts. So you see four, two in the front, two in the back gore skirts. And B is the six gore skirt. C is the eight gore skirt, four in the front and four in the back. And the D is the skirt with goddess. So the, for D, that means that you're adding this uh, triangle shape fabric to make that shape to the garment, this, the skirt with the goddess. And for the gathers, figure 5.10, you see uh, you're using this dart equivalent in A to make some fullness around the waist area or you can add the extra style fullness by adding more fabric and folding this fabric together and sew it. Then you will make the skirt more like bigger and look very fullness. Last but not least, I want to talk about how you can support this shape of the garment. So the shape of the garment can be enhanced and preserved by underlying fabrics that can include the interfacing lining, underlining, and interlining. The main outer fabric of the garment is called the body, fashion, or shelf fabric. And then you can have this additional fabric on the line of it, on the knees of it, it's called as underlying fabrics. The first interfacing is a supporting fabric used in almost all garments that lends body, shape, and reinforcements to limited areas. So the example areas and people use, designer use this interfacing more often will be collars, collar bands, cups, buttons, and buttonholes, pockets, waistbands, and other small design details. And for lining, that's the near replica of the garment constructed of a lightweight fabric and sewn inside the garment with seams allowances reversed to provide a finished inside appearance. The reason you're having this lining is because they can cover the garment's seam allowances making the inside attractive when the garment is taken off. And also it can make the garment more comfortable for people who wear those and they can provide extra warmth as well. And also I want to talk about the interlining and the underlining. So interlining is that uh, it can be applied strictly for additional warms. So you can add some additional material to make the garment more warm. So any material inserted for warms between the garment body fabric and the lining constitutes this interlining. So usually this will require more of the more materials and the labor cost. And then underlining is that lining each major piece of the garment individually. So this picture is showing you the example of this facing, lining, and interfacing and underlining. So this underlining of garment is less costly than lining this eats because underlining requires extra fabric but little additional labor for that. Okay, so these are all I want to talk about the shape here and then I'll talk more about the silhouette and the style on the next video.